for um, you know, Instagram are now going to implement um, are now going to roll out this new feature where they're going to be hiding the likes. I think it was a conversation they probably had already started in house, but it kind of came to a head when Kanye West was talking about the effects of likes on Instagram um, concerning with mental health. So it's been a constant conversation now. And I think in general, being a cynic that I am, I think this has more to do with the fact that Instagram is suffering from engagement. Um, I don't think there's many kids or many people um, using Instagram as much as they were in the past. So in order to drive engagement, um, Instagram is now trying to get away one of the biggest taboos, one of the, one of the things that was kind of holding people back from posting loads of content on Instagram, which is likes. Because if you think about it, the reason why a lot of Finstagrams popped up mainly was because, you know, some people wanted to keep their kind of influencer professional side of their profile separate from their going out and partying with their friends profile. But most of it had to do with the idea that you wanted to be able to upload stuff that wasn't necessarily the most polished. Maybe it wasn't taken with the SLR. Maybe it wasn't brand endorsed. Maybe you didn't have the right outfit on. Maybe it was, you know, just whatever miscellaneous uh, pictures. You wanted to take them and upload them without having the, without feeling um, inadequate because you didn't get the likes that your other pictures would normally get. And, and I think most influencers and most people that are obsessed with social media are probably the same people who check, like, you know, every other minute how many likes their posts got, right? They're hovering all over the fucking icons, seeing how many likes, they, how, many, how, many, how many heart emojis they have on each image. And that obviously um, then makes people, it makes the stakes for posting a lot higher. So you then get that kind of, you know, that kind of paralysis by analysis thing. You start to kind of um, think, overthink how you, what you're going to post. And then eventually you end up posting on a, on a Finstagram, which is usually private. There's no way of, of Instagram really getting anything from your private account in that respect. Um, it's kind of in a, in a walled garden. So Instagram, I think what they're doing with this hiding likes thing is basically changing the way people upload. It's going to make it, it's going to go back to the old, the, the, the hope is it goes back to the old days where people used to upload whatever. Like my, I've still got some of my old, I've still got my old archive of Instagram images that I'm probably going to print someday and put into a little zine and just have it for myself. But I remember I used to just upload shit on Instagram, like Facebook uploads back in the day. Just used to upload whatever. Whatever I had on my phone, took a picture of my fucking feet, of my hand, of a pencil sharpener, of a sky. I didn't care. I just upload whatever. It's just like a visual diary for me, right? And I think that's what they want it to return to. And I think with hiding likes, people are going to be able to post memes a lot easier. People are going to post videos, post random clips, random slideshows. It's just going to drive the engagement up. But this other theory that Business Insider has is that the whole idea behind... Um, um, Instagram hiding the likes is because they want to stop the the slew of um, Instagram influencers kind of scamming the site, um, which is weird. I never really, I never really knew this was a thing, but again, you know, there's a market for everyone. The headline of Business Insider says the following: It says some Instagrammers are scamming their followers by flaunting wealth they don't have, and the problem could get worse if the problem if the platform implements its hidden likes. So this is the opposite, actually, what I said. They actually think if they hide the light, it's going to be worse, which I don't really understand. But anyway, let's, let's read this. Um, since February, an Instagram account called uh, Baller Busters has been calling out these fraud calling out these frauds which is dubs uh, flex offenders self in self-identifying entrepreneurs who show off a fake lavish lifestyle to sell young follow services like mentorship programs or online classes reported by taylor lorenz for the new york times so i guess there is a whole slew of new generation of ty lopez's around ty lopez is i think still a solid dude i think i have to credit him a lot with the reading um when when i started listening to ty lopez at the beginning i don't listen to him anymore but the the one thing i got from him was this idea of like soaking in all the knowledge from these books um, that's your mentors. You don't need to go and reach out to people and get them coffee. You can buy their books and read, you know, kind of learn from their mistakes, learn from their successes and apply that to your own life. And of course, you know, the value of a book, you know, $20 or 20 pounds and you get a couple of lessons from it from somebody that's super successful. You would never kind of cross paths with in your everyday life makes that book whole lot worth it. So I've got a lot of time for him in general, but you know, some of his, um, the way he does business can probably rub people up the wrong way. But it seems that there's a whole generation of kids now who are taking that methodology and kind of like extrapolating it and going to it from the T. So the article continues, these services can cost thousands of dollars, but aspiring entrepreneurs end up paying for bad advice, Lorenzo wrote, adding that some scammers hire subcontractors to teach their own classes, which is fucking awful, isn't it? So the influencers are front, then he gets other people who are actually successful to then come and teach their course. Um, Lorenz calls them new breed scammer, typically men whose Instagram profiles consist of corporate headshots, avatars, large followings, um, possibly purchasing a feed of cars, money and jets. After, pro after a process that involves everything from examining legal filings and screenshot messages from these from those who said they've been scammed to taking an industry, talking to industry experts, Bola Buster typically bust the scam on Instagram stories, Lorenz wrote. We're not TMZ or a view page. We actually do investigate journalism, the account administrator told her. Um, 
Instagram is all about bragging and influencing, which I don't really agree. In millennials are giving money a new look, according to uh, Larissa Four in a place piece in Forbes. They will vacation at Bifa with their buddies or fly to New York for a weekend. Andrew writes, and they see the richness in the storyline, in the storytelling of having an experience rather than buying one of expensive things, which is true. But I think that's more so for everybody. I think the popularity of Google flights, kayak, Skyscan, all these places, um, budget airlines for the most part are, you know, there's never a time when you go to Stanford Airport on a Ryanair flight that's never fucking completely jammed. I think most people are leaning more towards experiences. Maybe the ad, the kind of rise in popularity of festivals in London has been a big thing. But that's not really an indication that people are showing off on Instagram. People want to people want to live interesting lives. The, like, well, the world already is in a bit of a fucked up place. So I think if there is an increase in people kind of, really enjoying the free time that they have then i think that should be encouraged because you know if they kind of focus on what they see in the metro every day while they're going to work they're going to blow their brains out in it so if people can have some kind of escapism through other people's feeds if, even if it is bought or it is made up so be it um da, da, da. and it continues um look no further than rich kids of instant of the internet rkoi to see the extent of which is insta instagram has become a blagging platform um these feeds are filled with uh, everything from luxury cars and yacht trips to luxury beach vacations but who knows which of these kids is actually rich and who cares really you know if you're gonna follow RK, rkoi rich kids of instagram then you're doing it because you just want to have a peek into other people's lives isn't it see what how the the other the, the your neighbors are living because this is usually something you don't necessarily... This is probably one of the sick things, awesome things about the internet. You never really had an idea about what actually the day-to-day -day lives of a rich person is like. And you can actually legitimately follow somebody who's legitimately wealthy, who doesn't need to work, and see what they get up to every day. It's quite, it might be quite interesting if you're that way inclined. I don't have any interest in it whatsoever. You know, I actually have loads of things that I'm actually more concerned about day-to-day. -day. But if you're, if that's your form of entertainment, what's, what's, who am I to judge? Uh, more fake influencers could pop up on Instagram. Uh, wealthy millennials are taken to social media not just to flaunt their riches, um, Business Insider says, but to exert influence over trends. Influencers' clout is increasing and it's shifting the power dynamic of the luxury world, according to Mark Beck. Mm, I don't think that's true. Rise of Instagram means that display of wealth and extended influence has created a perfect cocktail in which flex offenders can thrive and the more fake influencers could pop up now that Instagram is considering hiding likes on post. Um, this Instagram began testing. I don't think that's true because I still think there is an element. If you're going to work with a brand and a brand wants to work with you, they're obviously going to ask you to take a screenshot of your analytics, right? Or maybe there's going to be an option where third parties can have kind of a snapshot of your analytics or some of support. They're going to get some info on you. And numbers speak louder than words. You might be able to get away with scamming or finessing a couple of brands here and there, but the word will spread. You don't really have the influence you speak about that you're a bit of a no that you're a bit of a blagger, and then you won't stop getting deals. So it, it's, it's, it doesn't really have much ground to work with in that respect. And also, I think if you look at the Jenners or the or the Kardashians, sorry, um, Kylie Jenner, Kendall Jenner, and you look at them and their friends, I think the actual opposite is true. I think most kids who are that rich are trying their best to look are trying their best to maybe position themselves, not to look, maybe to position themselves with people who car who are generally not as wealthy as them, but are far more interesting and have far more legitimate influence. There's no coincidence that somebody like a Kendall or Kylie are hanging out with Tyler and these kind of people because that's where um that's where the that's where it's fun, that's where the funds are and that's where the actual opportunities are and the good times are if you're that person, right? Because you get to hang around with real people. And for the fans watching you, they also get to imagine, oh, yeah, that person must be cool if they're friends with that person because, you know, that person's legit as fuck. So I think, if anything, most rich, there is a separation. There is probably an area of Instagram where the rich, flaunty, you know, protect on your wrist um, over, you know, over the steering wheel, over Bentley, you know, with your shoes that are Gucci down below pictures. Those exist. But the wide majority of kids nowadays, I think, in my experience, Try, especially if you're really wealthy, they want to position themselves next to the movers and shakers of, of actual culture and put themselves in those kind of spaces. That makes sense. But I'm just thinking about this actually with influencers. Do you think some cars, I'm looking at this Mercedes G-Wagon, do you think some cars' interiors are designed in a way that allows the driver to take selfies? Especially like of your wrist and your hand and the steering wheel. Do you think they, they purposely engineer or they purposely design the seats and the dashboard and where, the, and where, the, and where the, the steering wheel is and maybe it's adjustable so that you can actually get your wrist and your fucking shoe in the same shot? That is nuts if true, isn't it? Imagine if that's the actual thing they do to make sure everyone kind of is able to see the badge of your car and stuff like that is nutty. Because you see that oh, quite often, isn't it? The badge the, or that picture with the RR on the back of the seat. 
everyone does that thing where they kind of lean to one side so you can see the stars on the, on the roof and you can see the back of the stack. Jesus Christ, man. There's nothing more cringy than that, isn't it, really? Um, but again, you know, I used to post pictures of my trainers, you know, staring down from the bottom back in the day. And I, and I think that is ridiculous as well. But, you know, people do what they got to do in that respect. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see what happens with the, with the hidden likes thing. I still think... I still think it came from maybe a, a good place from Instagram. I don't think it was mostly a commercial thing. I just think they wanted more people to use the app. I think they've seen, like myself, I hardly use it. Um, um, and I think they have seen that and they want to kind of, uh, they want to kind of jump, encourage people to start using it again. I know when they start hiding likes, I'm going to jump back on it and I'm going to start posting bears. Um, not because I care about likes, but because, you know, I just want to just jump back on again when they hide likes. It would just be funny. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's see what happens, man. It might, again, it might encourage people to be a bit more creative on Instagram too, because it's going to be stale at the moment, isn't it? Which is why I probably snapped, I mean, that's probably why TikTok has come in and kind of stole a march on them. It's going to be stale. So hopefully they can kind of, you know, get a kick up the ass they need. And I also saw online too, um, Instagram are going to, uh, they're, they're kind of debuting a TikTok-like feature that they're kind of trialing somewhere, which is, you know, sad, but it always happens with apps. So they're going to essentially kill TikTok app. Um, in one fell swoop when they kind of take it on but we never know maybe tiktok might live on in the same way that snapchat has snapchat didn't die we we, we, we thought instagram stories would kill snapchat but it's still around it's still you know maybe hanging on for dear life but it's still surviving in some respects so let's see